Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, we are down a few in our numbers. wonder where all they all went. Um, this week, so today and Wednesday, we are kind of stepping away from the book, although I haven't been very good at sticking directly with the book all the way through anyway. But today, I want to talk about atheism uh, a little bit, as you can tell by what I gave you. Um, also, on Wednesday... My plan is uh, somebody, I don't remember who it was, Debbie Atkins actually, requested that we talk about Seventh-day Adventism, Adventist, Adventism. So if you want to look into that a little bit, prepare, uh, maybe look at a little, Ellen G. White is the the person who kind of got that started, uh, which actually it was was sort of an offshoot of, of one particular group led by, well, we'll get into that and we'll talk about that later. But um, that's really interesting stuff. This morning, though, uh, I want to talk about atheism. And this is, it's really interesting how this came about. So I was, I was going through YouTube, as you do, and listening to like several different uh, atheist arguments. And I was also listening to some like apologetics on atheism. And I listened to like tons of stuff. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to Google what happens if in Google you type in best atheist arguments or something like that. And uh, this was actually the, the thing that popped up. Well, the, the first thing that pops up other than like an, an uh, apologist who is trying to like defend, you know what I mean? So this is like from, um, from an atheist talking about atheism and that sort of thing. And so uh, as I was going through this, I was like, hold on, this, this sounds a lot like a video I heard. Um, and so... I went back through and listened through some of the videos, and there was actually an apologist who was going through this article and talking uh, about point by point. And so I'm like, that's pretty awesome. I, I want to I wanna, like, steal his stuff. And so if, if you go through this and, and you're like, this sounds familiar. I've, I've heard this before. It's because I stole it from somebody. Um, there's a guy, Mike Winger, and, and quoting my sources. And, and this is, is a lot of his stuff. Um, this isn't like a, a glowing recommendation of all of that guy's stuff. Uh, as with anything, you know, use some discernment. Uh, but I thought he put together some, some cool things. And so I want to go through some of this. I think it would be helpful to talk about this. Before we start, though, um, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, our awesome God, we love you so much. We're so thankful for all you do for us, the way you provide for us. You constantly uh, just show us your grace and mercy every single day. Lord, help us to... Be more like you. Help us to be uh, led by your spirit. Help us to be filled uh, with you so we can can shine our lights, uh, your light, to those around us. Lord, help us to be prepared uh, in discussions with people as we're evangelizing. Uh, This morning, specifically, we're focused on on atheism. Uh, Lord, help us to be prepared uh, mentally. Help us to to look through some of these things and analyze some of those claims um, keep an open mind and open heart so we can really listen to what their arguments are uh, so we can thoughtfully know how to respond to that. Lord, uh, always be with us. Help us to, to always seek your will in our lives. May we do the next right thing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, something that, that you have to know with, with atheism, there, there are kinds of... Um, there are so many different types of atheistic beliefs, and there's, there's a lot of reasons why somebody might be atheist. Um, and there, could, there are some intellectual, uh, like philosophical arguments. There's some arguments like from science that push people. There, there's, there's different things. Um, the two major reasons uh, that why I, I've, I've read, this was like a 2018 survey or something. And, and atheism, um, the, the biggest reason why, if people had to say one reason, why are you atheist, go. And the number one reason was actually uh, the problem of evil. Why is there evil in the world? And we're going to talk about that. Um, the second one was uh, something along the lines of just bad experiences with Christians, hip- hypocritical people in the church. Uh, and actually, in, in the top reasons why uh, people are atheists, um, a lot of them has to do with bad experiences that they had. They, they grew up sort of uh, you know, religious in some ways, but there was something about the people, the way that things were handled, and, and it just turned them off, Christianity, and so they turned away. Um, there are a lot of, if, if you think about, especially young people right now, 
uh, like from, from junior high all the way through high school, college even, you have, there, there's a lot in, in the world right now that, that's pushing towards atheism. And uh, if, if you just get on YouTube, uh, you'll find so many people that, that are, are, are spouting atheistic viewpoints and beliefs. And, and there's, there's all kinds of stuff. And, and a lot of times what happens, if you watch a video from an atheist who's, who's trying to like, like just prove that there is no God or, or bash Christianity or whatever, um, a lot of times you'll have like rapid fire things. It's like, here, here, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, what about this verse doesn't even mean this. And look at what this verse says. Um, what you've got to do with a lot, and what's in this disclaimer here, is that when we are approaching an atheistic argument, what you've got to do is you've got to slow things down and take it point by point and just see, okay, is this an accurate statement? Is this logical? Is this an actual, like, is this statement? Is this evidence? Is this a claim? Is this just something that, that they're, they're saying? Because sometimes what happens is there's a lot of, uh, ridicule, scoffing, mocking, like, well, how could you believe in that? Um, and that's, keep in mind, that's not really an argument. That's just, that, that's a statement. And so sometimes we, we kind of get overwhelmed with, with the argument. We don't even know, how do I respond? What, what do I say? Where do I go? Uh, and a lot of times it's just, just slow it down, take it point by point. Uh, maybe even ask, if you're in a conversation with somebody, um, say, okay, well, what, what is like the biggest piece of evidence for you that there is no God? Or uh, that why you reject Christianity. And then you will start from there and that's and, and have them build their argument so you know kind of what, what to expect and what's going on. Um, you know, having a, a dialogue conversation instead of just like throwing out those zippy one-liners or whatever. Um, yeah, you got to be careful with that. We, we need to like have this mentality of searching for truth. You know, you're not going to find truth through molecule, molecule? Ridicule, mocking, <laughs> or scoffing, any of those things. Okay, so uh, that's it. Now, this, this article here uh, takes five of uh, what he considers the best arguments of atheism. And I, I'm going to tell you, like, just right off the bat, the first four here are kind of not the best. Uh, honestly, if, if you really logically think through it, um, there's some circular reasoning going on in at least a couple of these. Um, and and there's some th if you if you just like talk it talk it out and, and think about okay what what does this mean to, to the end and, and you know what's what's going on there, the last one number five I think is is a huge one is a big one and it is the problem of evil and so uh, we'll approach that one because that, that that one is hard it is tough um, and so we can get through this all right uh, so the first one there is uh, the, the idea that we are all atheists um, and that's it's from that that article. And so the quote is from Richard Dawkins uh, from his book, The God Delusion. Um, and his, his quote is, We are all atheists about most of the gods that humanity has ever believed in. Some of us just go one god further. Um, and this, believe it or not, this is actually an argument that um, you hear a lot with, with modern, like people on YouTube. Like just, it's, it's like, yeah, you're, you know, we're pretty much all atheists. It's just you, you believe in one more god than, than I do. It's like, okay, does that... First of all, is that really a, a good argument for why atheism is, is the way? But um, like, think about it. There, there are two main viewpoints here, and there are two things within this statement that you, we kind of need to unpack a little bit. So the first thing there is, okay, there's, there's actually just a little difference between monotheists and atheists. You just believe in one more God than I do. But if you think about it, that is like the defining characteristic of what it means to be a monotheist or atheist. Like, the belief in one God, that, that, okay, yes, that is the main difference. That is the big difference. But I, I would suggest that is like kind of a huge difference. That completely changes your worldview. It, it changes the way you look at things, the way you interact with things, uh, and that's, that's big. Like, the logic behind that statement of saying, well, you just believe in one more God than I do, uh, if we think about that with other things, like if, if someone who is not married came to me and said, uh, well, Jason, you're basically a bachelor because you just have one more wife than I do. It's like, okay, yeah, but, you know, there's a huge difference between unmarried and married. Um, there's a huge difference in unemployed versus employed. You just have one more job than I do. Okay, well, that, that's kind of a big deal. Or, like, I, I just killed one more person than you, you know, so you're pretty much a murderer, too. Or nobody's a murderer. Just one, you know, that's, that mentality, that, that argument, kind of, it, 
it falls through. But you'll be, you'd be surprised how many times you hear something along those lines. Um, but just think that through and, and see, does this apply to other areas uh, in life? Because that's, that's really interesting. Uh, I, this little side note there, um, you know, belief in God deeply affects your worldview. Because a lot of times you, you will hear atheists saying things like, especially the ones that were Christian and then uh, went through a deconstruction of faith process, uh, what they'll say is, you know, I just feel so freed after I I'd loosed the bonds of Christianity and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, if, if it makes that big of a deal, then maybe it is a big deal, um, that, that, that belief in God. Um, so just, just show in there the, the reasoning there. Okay, any, any thoughts or questions on, on that one? The problem that you're going to see a lot of times is um, even Richard Dawkins has been, there are other atheists that are like, you shouldn't listen to what Richard Dawkins said because uh, there are a lot of, if we think of, of like atheism as, as a ladder, it's kind of like a lot of these arguments that we're going to read are kind of like bottom rung, like philosophically unsound, we would we'd call it. Um, like there are a lot of other atheists who are like, yeah, this, this is not what we would say uh, if, if really intellectually, you know, philosophically based. Uh, yeah, we, would, we wouldn't go there because of some of those inconsistencies. Um, yeah, and, and that's, that's helpful when we try to analyze that and go through it and, and think, okay, is this logical? Does this make sense? Is this in line with the scientific method, with, with what science is? Um, and I think that would, that would really do a lot for us. A, a lot of these you're going to see, if we automatically assume an atheistic worldview, then some of these will make sense. But, uh, I, I would say not this one, but some of these will make sense if you automatically start with an atheistic worldview. But we're going to see how that's really circular reasoning because I can only make this statement if atheism is true. Well, how do you know atheism is true? Well, because it has to be true because that's the natural world and that's what we experience. And so. Uh, if we start with that premise, we're going to find things to support that, and that's, that's how we're going to be discussing this. So it's, this is really interesting, um, and a lot of times it, you have to really slow it down uh, and think through, or you will get a headache. The second part of this I, I think is interesting because this is uh, also another thing that's used uh, quite frequently. I think there's, there's a term for it. I'm trying to remember. It's, it's called like street epistemology or something. Um, and what this is, it, it's like a, a way of arguing. And this, the, second, the second part of this, if you had, cons and this is what an atheist would say to you, if you had consistent standards, the very reason you reject other religions and gods is the same reason you should reject Christianity. And the example there, um, you know, if someone comes to you and says, uh, so you don't believe that Thor is, is God. And you'd be like, well, of course not, I don't. And they would ask, well, why? Why, why don't you think, why don't you accept Thor as, as God, as deity? Um, and no matter what reason or argument you give, the answer to that would be, well, that's why I don't believe in your God. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see the evidence that supports Thor. Um, you know, and, and whatever that you say. 
And so that would be just a, a, a quick approach that an atheist might use to, to throw back at you. And a lot of times, if you don't really think this through, you might not know how to respond. It's like, well, yeah, there is. And it's like, well, what? Prove it. And you know, it gets into that, that sort of uh, argument. But the thing is, there are some actual differences and, and, and lines of reasoning that we can talk about, evidences for God uh, and evidences of why we believe in God that don't apply to Thor or Zeus or Vishnu or Krishna or Muhammad or, you know, uh, any, anybody. They wouldn't say Muhammad is God, but you know what I mean. Um, so these, these things, and there are, there are some, some arguments here. We are not going to have time to, like, <laughs> in-depth go through all of these. These are pretty heavy things. Um, if, if something here sticks out to you, do some research. Uh, look into it. So I would say it would be good if, if you could be well-versed in at least one of these things because uh, if, if you go in-depth and you can study it and, and, and know it pretty well and, and have some good arguments, it at least can put like a, a pebble in the shoe of an atheist. So just in your conversation, it might be like, oh, yeah, I never, didn't think about that. Uh, and so there's, there's different things to look at. There's, the, uh, there's some cosmological arguments uh, like the Kalam cosmological argument. Uh, if you Google it, 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 it's, it pops up. But basically, there's three main premises, and there's some other things that follow. But everything that begins to exist has a cause. And if you reason through that, everything that, okay, we're not saying that everything has a cause, but everything that came to exist, that began to exist, that had a beginning, must have had a cause that caused that. And so, okay, there we go. The second premise is the universe began to exist. Um, at one point, there was no universe, but then there was. So that's, that's another thing. And so if you put those two together, therefore the universe has a cause. There's some further digging you can do into that, and it, you need to be, be prepared of how to answer some objections to that. I don't think that most people would say that the universe is eternal. Um, I think most people would, would grant at least that the universe did have a beginning at some point. Um, and so that's, that's something to really get into. And that, it's really important on that one to you know, start with, with like, okay, ground zero. Let's not automatically assume God and then say, well, because God exists, we know he started. You know, that's, just don't. Uh, just start with this assumption. There you go. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Yes. And that's, and that's really interesting because um, that, that will go into the second quote from him, um, actually, uh, because that we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But it also goes into like, the next argument for uh, a designer and creator, uh, the teleological arguments uh, of design. And you can look at it. From a, a biology perspective, you know, look, look at how, how the symbiosis of nature. You, you see the, the way that things just work together so well and, and like the complexity of the human body, the complexity of a hummingbird, like the, just all of those things um, just do point to a designer. Or from a physics standpoint, like why are we able to, to assume certain things to be constant? Why, why do we say that the speed of light is constant? Why would it make sense that we have something that is Constant, and there, there's some, some things you could talk about there. Um, so, you know, if you want to dig in deep in that. The moral argument, uh, now this is, we got to be careful if, if we use a moral argument to say that, you know, because there is a moral good, there is moral evil, because of that, that, that shows God's existence, we're not saying that atheists are immoral or bad people. Like, that's, that's not it, because what a lot of times people come back with is, or are you saying I'm bad? Like, and, no, and the, the statement is, no. And since you do have good qualities and you do have good morals, 
I think that points to um, evidence of God. Yeah. Yeah, the, the very argument that you get faced with when, you know, a lot of times the moral argument turns into, can you imagine what life would be like without Christians? And the response to that is, well, I think we've been dealt with that for stage. Uh, um, yeah. Christianity has been linked to some terribly vicious and, and unmoral, immoral times. Right. And, and that's, that's true, because if, if every, like, pretty much across the board, everybody looks at that and says, yeah, that was bad. Or, like, the Holocaust. We're like, that was bad. And I think everybody's in agreement that that, that should not have happened, and that was not a, not a good thing. It's like, well, why do we all feel that injustice, that, that sense of that, that is wrong? Why is there a sense of evil, and, and why, why is there good? Um, and I think it, it's, it's harder to come across a naturalist approach of, of how do we get there and why do we all like, kind of feel the same way about that. Now, there are some things that are kind of subjective based on culture to culture, but uh, I think that overall there are some things that most people would say, yeah, that's not good, which kind of leads into the next argument and something that I didn't really think about a whole lot, but the argument from beauty. You know, is, is there like objective beauty? Um, are, are there things that most people would say, well, that's beautiful, like the sunset or, you know, rainbow or, you know, scenes in nature, or even sometimes like, uh, I don't know about you, but some, I, I get the, this feeling, a sense of awe when I see like a, a lion or, or something just like, and from a, a naturalistic standpoint, why would we have evolved to develop those, those feelings and thoughts uh, against something that's so dangerous? You know, it's like, yeah, lions are cool, but, and... I'm not saying that everybody thinks that they are, but like that, that's, a, that's a thing like throughout history that's, that's people have been attracted to that sort of thing. Um, and there's some majestic stuff. Why? You know, wh- how do we explain that um, for in, from another worldview? I think that's, that's something to think about. Free will is another thing. If, if you think about a lot of um, the, the higher higher rung atheists, you know, the, the latter thing. A lot of the, the people who are more thoughtful and consistent with, with their reasoning and philosophy will say that if God doesn't exist, then free will doesn't really exist either. Because any of our actions, any of the things that we do, it's just a byproduct of all the other inputs. Uh, like, I might not un- be able to understand, you know, why I made this decision or whatever, but... You know, if, if we have a certain set of, of criteria, uh, you know, if the universe is a certain way and there's this m- many chemicals and this, this much stuff in your body and this happening in the environment, then you will make this decision. There is no other option. There is no way that you have a choice uh, because you will just be acting from a completely naturalistic standpoint uh, and you will be doing what, you know, you, there was no other option, really. And, and I don't remember if I put consciousness. No, I did not. But um, that's, that's kind of a, a separate but related thing, consciousness. You know, is consciousness a real thing? Um, I think some people would say no. Uh, that, you know, this is just sort of a, sort of a, a mirage. Um, you know, it's something that, that we think is true, but you know, really it's not. So there, if you go deep in that one, that, that one's really, it's, it hurts your brain too. But... And I, I, I would agree with that. that. This is, it's really interesting. You know, I was, uh, in, in one of the, the videos that I was watching through, uh, just specifically about free will, um, there, were, there was someone who was, he was a Christian, and then uh, he, he was like teaching a, like a middle school Bible class or something, and, and the, the people started asking like really tough questions, and he, he was like, what do I do with this? And, like really did a deep dive into it. 
Um, and he was a Calvinist before, and then he saw all of the reasonings um, of why free will doesn't exist uh, from an atheistic standpoint. And then he went, did a, a further deep dive. I was like, you know, you know, maybe Calvinism isn't the way to go. Maybe we do have free will. Um, and, and he sort of just did a complete swing there, uh, which I thought was interesting, um, just to say the least. The other two things there uh, I want to mention as far as evidence of God. Resurrection of Jesus, I think, is the best. Um, I, I honestly think if we can be you know, well-versed in the evidence of the resurrection of Jesus, and, and I mean, we, we have to think of it from a logical approach. Like, think of it this way, um, and I think I, I may put this later on here. Oh, I did, actually, in, in one of the, the future ones. But, you know, what kind of evidence would you expect if we had an all-powerful, almighty God who decided that he wanted to um, come to the earth and uh, you know, live his life as an example, um, be crucified and, and rose from the dead, what kind of evidence would you expect to him to leave behind? What would you see? And uh, if you go through what, what are the evidences that we actually see, you know, how does that line up? Um, and I, I think it's, it's a really, really good, good thing to do. So, um, yeah, be well versed. We talked about that quite a bit before, so I'm not going to do another deep dive. Another thing that, oh, go ahead, Aaron, sorry. You're good. And that, that's a good point, too. And think, just the scope of science, what science is supposed to do. Um, it is. And uh, seek out knowledge of the things that are testable and, and things that you can, you know, empirically, you know, and consistently get the results, which is interesting that the universe is designed in such a way that we're able to do that, that, that we can do an experiment and expect to get certain results because things are consistent. But also... Science is, is really good at doing things like figuring out how electricity works and how to get electricity from one place to another and how to make things and, and you know, technolo technological advances and, and you know, how do we fix a body that is, is breaking down? Um, you know, how, how do we do surgery and, and all that, those things? Science is really good about the physical things. If we expect to be able to scientifically prove that God exists, that would not make sense. For several reasons, but God tells us he's not physical, right? Um, God is spirit. And to say that, that science can study the spiritual, that's, I, I think that's beyond the scope of science. Um, and so we, we have to be careful with our use of what, what we mean by science, what can, we can prove by science, and, and that sort of thing. That's, uh, what does the evidence suggest? Um, so I think purely from a scientific standpoint, that's, that's not all there is in the world. Um, you know, if we say, I only believe in science, usually if someone says that, they, all, they make a philosophical statement. And so it's like, philosophy is not science, actually. It's, it's, there's a, there are different fields, and so um, if we try to mix and dabble, we just, it's okay, I think, to mix and dabble some of that, but we have to be honest with ourselves that that's what we're doing, um, that we're not saying that, you know, this is just a purely scientific, scientific, really, scientific argument uh, or knowledge that I gained from that. So, yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah.
how the human body breaks those things, but why they break. With mm -hmm. all of, uh, certainly with, with Aristotle's research, we see the, the final cause in all of his all of the research that was done uh, on the, the universe, on the world around us. On one great question that was trying to be answered was why? Mm -hmm. Why is this way? Um, there tends to be less focus on why and more just so on how. How does it work? How can we understand it? How can we use it? Uh, and I think the, the thing that you miss from that, and the reason why science, to, to Aaron's point, was intended originally to really coincide, to live in, in union with religion, was we wanted to know the why because we recognized there was something that was greater than man that was behind this. Yeah. Um, when you take that that out, then the why is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter why a tree is a tree and not a, a bunny. It <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter why the, the DNA in, in you know my heart is different than the DNA in my kidneys. It doesn't matter why those things are different. But there's a God behind it that said, I created that tissue muscle that to function in such a way as to pump blood as opposed to cleanse the body yeah. all of a sudden that matters because a, a being that is able to do that is supremely more intelligent than I am Amen and I, I think that's, that's really important to logically think through those things and, and why we have gotten to certain points uh, in our society and in life in general um, and that's Let's sprinkle through some of these others as well. Uh, I'm not going to have time to do all of this, unfortunately. But there's, there's one more thing I want to mention uh, on this list, the prophecy. On the very last page, uh, I did, this is very bare bones, uh, but at the very end, I labeled this fulfilled prophecy, and I listed three chapters of the Bible, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, and Ezekiel 26. Those, in my mind, are some of the most clear examples of fulfilled prophecy. If we can prove that something was written a long time before the fulfillment came, so there was a prophecy that was pretty specific that was fulfilled exactly as it was written later, uh, I think we can prove that Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, and Ezekiel 26 are all written way before the fulfillment of those prophecies, which Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 are both uh, messianic. They're about Jesus. Uh, look at Jesus' life. Look at his especially death. Um, and, and all the things that were involved with that. If you can make those connections, I think we can prove. Uh, David wrote that and Isaiah wrote that way before the time of Jesus. Um, I think that's helpful. That is true. That is a really good point, yeah. Amen. And so that, that's a big thing, talking about the stuff that happens in crucifixion before crucifixion was a thing, uh, or really widely used, yeah. The Ezekiel 26 passage, I think, is just awesome. It's talking about the destruction of Tyre, and some skeptics will actually point to Isaiah 26 to see, aha, see, this didn't happen like it said. If you carefully look through, especially pronouns, um, looking through the pronouns of who it's talking about, um, there's a huge section of, of the destruction of Tyre that is talking about what Nebuchadnezzar does specifically. But at the very first verse of Isaiah, er, Ezekiel 26, it talks about how oh, this was going to be like wave after wave. There's, there's going to be many people who were involved in this. And so, um, yeah, we can talk about that sometime. I think that that is that's good stuff. But uh, looking at all that, I think that, well, there was one out of the five. Um, that was really good. Now, the others. The, uh, there's a, just a couple things I want to point out about some of these others. The, the second one, religion only exists through indoctrination. Um, and that's like, the idea is you can only teach that religion is true or you can teach children to think critically. Uh, and Dawkins is presenting that as like mutually exclusive. Like you can't teach a child to be religious, but also to think critically. And so what they say is, well, what we need to do is never say anything about Christianity, about God, uh, about any of the, the spiritual stuff, and let a person, I, I think he's quoted as saying, let a person grow up until they're like 20, 
and then they can make a choice. Uh, and the statement in the article was like, after a generation, we'll find that everybody's atheist, that there's no more. But that is just like sociologically not true because uh, there are, throughout history, um, people are drawn to the thoughts of higher power, of supernatural influences. You know, you look at, at uh, Native American tribes, you look at, at people all around the world, there is like some kind of idea of a higher power. There's something greater than what's around us. And so if, if we only give like naturalistic explanations of everything, like isn't that indoctrinating towards atheism? Like that, that's kind of how that works. Aaron? Right. It, uh, yes, amen. And uh, I, I think that that's, that's really uh, our, our, our baseline. Um, and, and so, which is kind of weird because the next one, uh, Frederick Nietzsche, the German dude, atheism is instinctual. That's what he was saying. I've not come to know an atheism as a result of logical reasoning and still less an event in my life. It's to me a matter of instinct that, um, that we, we are just naturally atheist but we have to be taught how to have a supernatural view of things. Um, and it's, it's like, okay, really? Like, what if, if all that we went was what came naturally to us? You know, what would we think about the sun? Like, if we just look at it and we could only experience what, nat like, it's, it looks like the sun's moving around and we're just sitting still and the, and the moon's just like, like, a lot of the stuff that would come naturally probably isn't exactly true. You know, we need, we need something greater and, and so, you know, things that we can look at. Okay. Um, and there's a statement that's made here, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And that's actually, that's a statement that's used by several different um, atheists, especially YouTube popular atheists. Um, they they throw, throw out that, that word, and it's like, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. First of all, what do you mean by extraordinary evidence? Um, and a lot of times, if you ask somebody what they mean by that, they don't really know. Um, and there's not, not really anything specific. It is, yeah. Right, exactly, and, and so it's hard to really like nail that down and pinpoint what that is. I would say, um, okay, if there's an extraordinary claim, I would need solid evidence. Um, I think there, there would need to be um, you know, enough evidence to, to prove, and the evidence that I would expect to naturally follow, you know, because there, there were, <laughs> Heard someone being asked that, and they were like, well, if there was, like, video footage of the resurrection of Christ and, uh, you know, some alien race put that on the moon for us to find later, like, there, there it is. That would be, it's like, okay, do we, do we really expect there to be video evidence in a place where that did not exist at all? Um, and, you know, we would have to wait 2,000 years from those events before we'd actually be able to, like, play it and see it. Yeah, yeah, where did that come from? That's interesting. Right, yeah. And I would argue if there was, like, something where God just, just proved, like, to every single person, you know, I am God, you listen to me, that would, I think that would mess with free will a little bit, right? We, to, to, have, to have the opportunity to deny God, it shows that we do have free will, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. How, why would, would we ever come up with something like that on our own? Like, that's really interesting. Now, there's obviously so much more here. It didn't even get to, like, the best argument that they have, the problem of evil. Um, but please spend some time looking at that, thinking through it. Um, and 
we can have further discussion on that later, but thank you for all of your input in class. This is good stuff.